Greetings and welcome to Hope Lutheran Church. You may notice that we are wearing our red today. Red is the color of Pentecost. Pentecost is the day we celebrate the giving of the Holy Spirit to the church. It's also celebrated most times and in many places as the birthday of the church. My name is Gary Stevenson. Me amo Gary Stevenson. I'm the lead pastor at Hope Lutheran Church, and I'm pleased that we have this opportunity this morning to worship together. May it be a blessing for all of us. Good morning once again, and welcome again. Happy day of Pentecost. Happy birthday, church. A reminder that you are the church. This building is a place where we gather for worship, but you are the church. Where you go, where you live, where you breathe, where you extend hope in Jesus. As we've heard and repeated many times in the last few weeks, the church is not closed. The church has never been closed not necessarily safe for us to gather in large groups to worship, but we are the church wherever we are. I wanted to, to share that this morning during our service of worship, we will be celebrating the sacrament of Holy Communion. If you want to pause your video right after this introduction and get some elements ready, some bread and some juice or some wine, so when the time comes in the service, you'll be able to um, partake of the sacrament with us, that would be great. If you choose not to partake, we totally understand and we'll welcome you to partake of the sacrament when we're able to gather here and worship in person. Once again, I'd like to offer a welcome and a greeting in Spanish for those of us who are joining us. Bienvenidos a ustedes. Estamos aquí para celebrar el amor de Dios, el nacimiento de la iglesia que es nosotros. Todos nosotros somos la iglesia. La iglesia no solamente es un edificio, pero la iglesia es las personas que creen en Dios donde quieren que estén en el mundo, en sus casas, en sus trabajos, en sus vecindarios. Nosotros somos la iglesia. La iglesia no está cerrada. Y por este hecho, estamos aquí para celebrar y adorar a nuestro Señor. Muy bienvenidos a todos ustedes y queremos agradecerles para acompañarnos en este día. Welcome to worship. Please hear these words as I invite you to receive God's Spirit anew this Pentecost season. God's Spirit calls us into the future. God's Spirit calls us to new vision. God's Spirit calls us in compassionate love. Let us celebrate the richness and diversity of life as in the presentness of this God. The spirit of imagination is a gift to all people. The spirit of faithfulness is the gift of the earth. The spirit of hope breathes in the homeless 
and marginalized in the city. The spirit of freedom was announced by those who went before us, and we proclaim it again today. The spirit of love is a gift to the church in every age. The spirit is dancing, moving, struggling, rising, and calling to the ends of the earth. Thanks be to God for the gift of the spirit and for the blessing of the Pentecost. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us join our hearts in prayer. O oh God, on this day you open the hearts of your faithful people by sending into us your Holy Spirit. Direct us by the light of that Spirit that we may have a right judgment in all things and rejoice at all times in your peace through Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
the Feast of the Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Without warning, there was a sound like a strong wind, gale force. No one could tell where it came from. It filled the whole building. Then, like a wildfire, the Holy Spirit spread through their ranks, and they started speaking in a number of different languages as the Spirit prompted them. There were many Jews staying in Jerusalem just then, devout pilgrims from all over the world. When they heard the sound, they came on the run. Then when they heard one after another their own mother tongues being spoken, they were thunderstruck. They couldn't for the life of them figure out what was going on and kept saying, aren't these the Galileans? How come we're hearing them talk in our various mother tongues? Their heads were spinning. They couldn't make head or tail of any of it. They talked back and forth, confused. What's going on here? Others joked, they're drunk on cheap wine. And that's when Peter stood up and backed by the other 11, spoke out with bold urgency. Fellow Jews, all of you who are visiting Jerusalem, listen carefully and get this story straight. These people aren't drunk as some of you suspect. They haven't had time to get drunk. It's only nine o'clock in the morning. This is what the prophet Joel announced would happen. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on every kind of people. Your sons will prophesy, also your daughters. Your young men will see visions, your old men dream dreams. When the time comes, I'll pour out my spirit on those who serve me, men and women both, and they'll prophesy. I'll set wonders in the sky above and signs on the earth below. Blood and fire and billowing smoke. The sun turned black and the moon blood red. Before the day of the Lord arrives, the day tremendous and marvelous, and whoever calls out for help to me, God, will be saved. Grace and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. It, it was only a few months ago that I heard this conversation over and over again. Let, let me share what that conversation was and, and see if it sounds a little bit familiar to you. It went something like this. You know, I sure am glad that 2019 is coming to an end. It's been a rough year and 2020 has got to be better. Now, does that sound familiar to anyone else? Or was I the only one involved in that conversation? Seems like a silly kind of conversation now. I'm tempted to channel my inner Dr. Phil and ask the question, so how's that working for you then? Unfortunately, that would be a little too obnoxious, so I, you won't hear those words from me today. Although my gut tells me that we have a few people who will probably have a, the same or similar conversation in regards to 2020 and 2021 in another few months. One of the things that I'm grateful for in the midst of a, a world that the news is all, all seems to be negative is that our new cast, newscasters seem to be taking a little bit of time in the news shows to have a little bit of what's called a human interest story. In other words, they want to add a little bit of feel-good news. In the midst of all the, the numbers of new cases of COVID-19 and the total numbers of deaths in the United States and worldwide, these human interest stories, this feel-good news, may help give us a little feeling of hope in the midst of all the insanity like the story of the high school principal that visited each one of the graduating seniors, delivering the diplomas personally, driving over 1,500 miles, and handing out over 600 diplomas. Or the neighbors living in the cul-de-sac, lining the street, holding up signs and balloons as a young teenage girl, their neighbor, 
comes home from the hospital cancer-free after completing her chemotherapy treatments. Or the nine siblings gathered outside the window of the hundred-year-old mother in the care facility to sing and tell stories and share their appreciation on Mother's Day. Or the child or even the older adult who's celebrating a milestone birthday, whose party is made up with a parade of cars, trailing balloons and streamers, honking their horns, as the person celebrating the birthday stands or sits off to the side, waving at the cars as they drive past. I, I do applaud all of these creative ways that people have found to mark milestone occasions. For some of the people that are involved, they will never forget the creativity and the love that it has taken to put together these celebrations. And yet today, as the church celebrates Pentecost, receiving the gift of the Holy Spirit, often called the birthday of the church, I can't help wondering if as a birthday celebration, the church doesn't feel just a little bit cheated this year. I really don't expect cars to drive past houses of worship today, honking their horns, giving a hoot and a holler to celebrate the church's birthday. Even though houses of worship have been given the green light to across the nation to open up. It's important to remember that the church is not the building, it's the people. And I would guess that there are a number of people around the country who because of existing regulations limiting the number that will be allowed to gather or continued fear of COVID-19 and getting that themselves will choose to stay home again today. But if people, which are the church, are unable to gather, can there really be a celebration? On that first Christian Pentecost, the disciples and the followers of Jesus didn't begin the day expecting anything different. All that they knew at this point was that Jesus had been crucified and risen from the dead. Jesus had walked with them for another 40 days, telling the disciples and his followers to go to Jerusalem where they should wait and pray. And before ascending into heaven, before their eyes, they were curious. And since then, they've been sheltered in place, trying to make sense of what Jesus has in mind for them, whatever this promise from the Father was all about. And while they are together in the house, outside there's all kinds of activity taking place. For this was the Jewish Passover celebration, a harvest festival of sorts, held 50 days following the celebration of Passover. And while the Jews outside were occupied with festivities, those that were inside were devoted to prayer, waiting for the fulfillment of the promise. For the disciples and the other followers of Jesus that were gathered there, their future was uncertain. Jesus was no longer with them in the flesh. And still they wait and they hope and they trust. As we have for the past couple of months, waiting at home in uncertainty, waiting for an end to the shelter-in-place orders, waiting for life to return <clears throat> to something recognizable perhaps fearing for our own health, or that if we would go out and contact, come in contact with others, we might have a deadly impact on those with whom we come in contact with. Overwhelmed with, by something that they not, have not experienced before, or we have not experienced before, we're all waiting for a vaccine to bring an end to the pandemic. And on that first Pentecost day, waiting, their waiting was rewarded as God's promise was fulfilled in a very dramatic fashion. Suddenly from heaven came the sound like the rush of a violent wind that filled the entire house where the believers were gathered. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them and a tongue rested on each of them. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and they began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Fire and wind are signs of the Holy Spirit 
and they descend on the disciples on Pentecost. They push them out of the house to preach to the crowd who accuses them of throwing a fraternity party. Fire and wind are powerful symbols. Both have the potential for creation and for destruction. In Genesis, we read that in the beginning, the Spirit of God hangs over the water and God calls forth life. God calls Moses through the bush that burns but is not consumed. The fire leads the Israelites. A pillar of fire leads them from death to life. The Spirit sustains all living creatures, renewing the face of the ground. The Holy Spirit inspires prophets both men and women, to see visions and to dream dreams. But fire and wind are also terribly destructive, as we saw earlier this year when much of Australia burned, or earlier this month when the typhoon struck the Philippines, India, and Bangladesh. So maybe it makes sense as we celebrate Pentecost 2020, that fire and wind are a symbol of the day as we await to see what kind of wreckage of what was will be left behind, what will await us when this pandemic comes to an end. And to see, to await the birth of what will be. Because you see, we are called to see visions and to dream dreams. A number of years ago, I, I worked with a gentleman who was quite inspirational to me. Occasionally when we spoke, I would tell him a little bit about what was going on in my life, and uh, far too often it came across like I was complaining and that I had a lot of problems. And he would often stop me in mid-sentence. More than once he did that and said, whoa, 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 wait a second, you don't have a problem. You have an opportunity. And as much as it angered me at, at times, after a while the anger lessened. And it made more sense, what he said. Did I get smarter? Well, I can't say that for certain. But I did become much more aware that behind every issue there are problems and there are opportunities. Yes, COVID-19 is a problem, but it's also a problem that offers us opportunities. If there are things that we don't like, the way they're going in the world... This is a a time, especially for those of us who are Christ followers, to remember what is doesn't have to stay that way. Jesus calls us to the awareness where we fall short in our relationships with, with God, with our neighbors, with creation. This is a time to consider what in our personal and communal lives needs to be burned away and what needs to be renewed. We've seen COVID-19 disproportionately take more lives of brown and black people. As people of faith, how can we make the world a bit more equitable for these children of God? How important are people on the margins, be they our older population kept in care facilities, the homeless, or those essential workers who are unable to work from home? Should a veteran, one who who has risked his life or her life, for our freedom, be denied quality health care because of their race or mental illness or age or financial status or their home situation, whether they're homeless or not? Where is our love for neighbor? God have mercy on us. But we have also seen some unbelievable cooperation between scientists and researchers around the world. We've seen health care workers even sacrifice their own lives to save the lives of others. We have seen people reaching out to their neighbors in incredibly creative ways. And we have seen the face of the earth, and for that matter, the sky and the, the sea, we have seen them renewed. And what about our own lives? Will we allow this time to go by without time for reflection and renewal? You may have heard the churchy word for this. It's called repentance. Of what do we need to repent? 
And in what ways do we need to witness to God's life-giving work in Jesus Christ? You see, even in the midst of quarantine and stay at home, there's still plenty to do. The only way to fail is if we fail to take this opportunity and lose it completely. If we return from this and nothing has changed, I can't help but believe that we have missed out on an opportunity that God has given us to be faithful. And so church, happy birthday. Renewal is both a wish and a gift of the Holy Spirit. And the church, well, it's us. It's not the building. It's the people. We are partners with God in this thing called life. And so may we use this gift wisely. May it be a gift that we don't put away and forget about altogether, but one that we exercise and use as an opportunity to be faithful to our God. Amen. And may the peace of God that passes all understanding keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.
as the church scattered in space and geography, but gathered together in one spirit, I invite you to join me as we confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. On this day of Pentecost, we unite in prayer, asking God to send the Holy Spirit on the church, the world, and all who are in need. We pray for the church around the globe. For the Eastern Orthodox churches, we pray. Come, Come Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. For the Roman Catholic Church, we pray. Come, Come Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. For Protestant and Anglican churches, we pray. Come, Come Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. For Pentecostal churches, we pray. Come, Come Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. For evangelicals and independents, we pray. Come, Come Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. For our own congregation, we pray. Come, Come Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. And for everyone who searches for you, we pray. Come, Come Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Restore with your breath the whole creation, especially the lands and waters laden with pollution and the animals whose habitats are threatened. For your earth, we pray. Come, Come Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Send your spirit on the leaders of nations, on legislators, and on judges, that the people of the world will benefit from your justice and your peace. For the nations of the world, we pray, Come, Come Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Visit all who are suffering, all who feel hopeless, and all who face death. Send healing to those we name here before you now, either silently or aloud. For all who are in need, we pray. Come, Come Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Restore to health those who have contracted the virus. Uphold health care workers, grant jobs to those who are unemployed, and assist researchers in discovering a vaccine. For all who are comforting, confronting the coronavirus, we pray. Come, Come Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Bless those who are graduating from schools and universities. Give our youth hope for the future. For our graduates, we pray. Come, Come Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Show our nation and our churches how to connect with those whose languages we cannot speak. For the speakers of every language under the sun, we pray. Come, Come Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. As Elizabeth welcomed Mary to her home, Give us ways during this time to share with one another the faithfulness we receive from you. Surprise us with unexpected grace. For family members and friends, we pray. Come, Come Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Hear also the cries of our own hearts. For ourselves, we pray. Come, Come Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Receive our praise for all for all who for centuries have gone before us in the faith, from the first Pentecost throughout Christian history and up to this week. That at the end, we and all the saints will rejoice in your presence, we pray. Come, Come Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, as we said before, the church is not closed. You are the church, scattered in our community. We're the church scattered throughout the world in time and space. You are the church. God's Holy Spirit goes into us, goes before us as a light, as a fire this Pentecost season. We're reminded that Christ has ignited the church to 
to be for the world a sign of God's gracious presence. Wherever you go and with whomever you speak, whoever you come in contact with, I pray that God's peace, God's Holy Spirit, would come out of you and live in real and measurable ways. To you, the church, I say the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. I invite all of you, gathered in your homes or wherever you are, to join me in whichever way you choose in celebrating the sacrament of Holy Communion with us today. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We remember gathered here in this place that on the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus sat at a table with his disciples, and there he took bread, gave thanks, blessed it, and broke it, and he offered it to them, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. In the same way also after the meal he took the cup, Again, giving thanks, he offered it for them all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, poured out for you and for all people for the forgiveness of your sins. And he invited everyone gathered there with him, saying, Drink of this, all of you, in remembrance of me. For we believe the words of the Apostle Paul, that as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the saving death of our risen Lord until he comes again in glory gathered together this morning as witnesses of the resurrection, filled with the power and presence of the Holy Spirit. I invite you to pray the prayer our Lord taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Come to the banquet. Behold the risen Christ. Amen. Obviously, in terms of communion distribution, it's up to you. But I invite you to pause this video at this time, if you wish, and receive the sacraments of Holy Communion, knowing that Christ's body and blood provide us nurture and energy. God's gift of grace for this journey of faith. Amen. And now, may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that you've received strengthen you and keep you in God's grace now and forever. Amen. Life-giving God, you have fed us with your word and our hearts burn within us. Through this meal, you have opened us to your presence. Now send us forth to share the gifts of Easter with all in need. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And finally, receive this blessing. May the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen.
your church We are the hope on earth Will your King appear Let the darkness fear Show your mighty hand Hear the streets and Christ is risen, just as he said. Go in peace, share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia.